My name is Alison the Online Piano with an online violin tutor. Today I'm just going to talk to you about playing your instrument outside. So whether that's the violin, um, even the, the piano or keyboard, trumpet, clarinet, whatever it is, just a few things about playing outside. So as you can see actually, I'm standing right outside the, the London Eye at the moment. It is the capital's newest landmark, built for the millennial celebrations in the year 2000. As the largest observation wheel in the world, it offers visitors all-round views of up to 25 miles. So there we have it. So music outside is great for the audience, but perhaps not so great for the participant or for the instrumentalist themselves. Um, there are quite a few factors to take into consideration, so I've just made a few notes here so I remember everything I need to say. So obviously you've got your, your wind and your sun. Um, and obviously rain, they're not great, great. The wind is not so great for the music flying all over the place and everything. Um, the sun is not great for violins either because it can sort of melt the, the wood or, uh, sorry, melt the varnish on the wood. So you don't want to be playing in sort of searing heat. Um, also, uh, you've got flies to take into consideration as well. I've been playing outside before for weddings when flies have been quite a nuisance and, you know, when, when you're with both hands being occupied playing the violin, not really like you can do about the flies but you know one of those those factors of playing outside you've also got the outdoor acoustics or should I say lack of so um, what you can do to help counteract this so you might find lots of musicians or groups of musicians play in front of brick walls or walls or just outside of buildings because then at least the sound has somewhere to bounce off the worst kind of place to play is literally in the middle of, of, of an open place like a, like a park or something because the acoustics are just going to go right in the air depending on which way the wind blowing, um, some people are going to hear it, some people might not hear it. So, um, you know, you've, you've got the lack of acoustics to kind of think about possibly there. So if you can play next to a wall or a building, it, it goes some way to help. When you're setting up your equipment outside and you're deciding where to play, try and go, try to avoid next to massive crowds um, and lots of distractions. You can see there's lots of distractions going on here. So as well as playing outside, videoing outside is also lots of factors to, to take into consideration as well. So you don't want to be playing right next to a load of crowds, um, otherwise the sound is going to be absorbed by them and, and people aren't, aren't going to get the maximum that they are that they're going to get from the sound. Um, you can always mic up your instrument uh, if, if possible, but again the reverb and the volume does tend to get lost. A lot of it all just depends on the wind factor. Even though your, your speakers might be facing a certain way, if the wind is blowing to the right, then all the sound is going to be lost to the left and it's going to carry on to the right. So you can learn, lose, lose some reverb, especially, or, or delays, or any effects that you've put on, on the microphone afterwards, after micing it. But micing up your instrument, if possible, can help a massive amount as well. Some musicians do have alternate instruments. Um, so uh, instead of me playing on my, my really nice expensive violin, I could buy something like a cheaper alternative. Um, and a lot of um, a lot of people do do that. You can get sort of um, plastic key type instruments or instruments made of that aren't made of wood, especially made for you, depending if you're doing the clarinet or you know whatever type of instrument. Um, that's usually not so great because I know that before I even open up the case, that I'm going to be playing with a much more inferior product. Therefore, you know I'm not going to be in for such a great experience. However, it does protect my violin from the actual element. It is much better to play in groups if, if you can, rather than playing solo. Um, for example, if you are playing solo at a wedding, what you want to do is try and set yourself up nearer to the guests rather than far away. Otherwise, the further away you are, the less you're going to hear the sound, unlike it would be if you were in a hall or, or a room of some sort. So you want to be as close to the guests. You don't want to be near massive amounts of crowds because it's going to get lost. Um, but in terms of that, I'm talking if you're in a park or, or somewhere more public. But especially at a wedding, you want to try and set yourself up reasonably close to the people so that they can hear exactly what you're doing. Um, otherwise, the sound is just going to go up into the air and you're not really going to get anything out of it. Um, 
it's good for passers. If, if you're doing an impromptu performance, it's good for passers-by to enjoy a good performance. So if you're playing in a, you know, a, a field or a park or something like that, um, and it's really it's just an alternative place to play. Really, apart from playing in a regular location, it's just it's fun to do for a, a kind of a one-off, once in a blooming kind of occasion to play outside. It's it can be fun. It's interesting. Every musician should do it at least once. But uh, but yeah, so hopefully there's just a, a few factors to kind of consider when, when you're playing your musical instrument outside. Um, I hope it's just been informative to any of you guys out there. Um, feel free to leave a comment underneath the video. Um, and be sure to subscribe to my channel if you like my videos and want to see more. And I'll catch you all next time.